Okay, I'll go ahead and get started now. Um, for those of you that are on time, um, thank you very much and welcome to uh, the talk on Wikipedia. Um, so basically, I'm just going to talk more about um, what Wikipedia is, why the university cares about Wikipedia, and what we did for the Edit-a-thon last year for New South Wales History Week. So before we get started, I'd like to begin with an acknowledgement of country. The University of Newcastle Library respectfully acknowledges the traditional custodians and pays respect to our elders, past, present, and future on the land of which we stand on. So for me, that's the Pambalong clan of the Wabakal people. I'm on the Callahan campus. Um, if you're on the Arumba ca campus, that's the um, Dark and Young people, or if you're in Port Macquarie, Birapai. So wherever you're joining us from, um, just want to acknowledge those people. Now, to introduce myself, I'm Paige Wright. I'm the Special Collections Project Librarian here at the University Library. And I just wanted to introduce you to Jennifer Go. Go ahead and say hi, Jennifer. Hello. She's our facilitator and she's a teaching liaison librarian here at the library. So if you have any questions throughout my presentation, um, please feel free to type them in the chat and um, Jennifer can tell me that there's a question and um, yeah, I'm happy to answer questions throughout the entire thing. Um, so do feel free to jump in. So why Wikipedia? Why do we care about it? Well, I'm a librarian and I'm all about free information. Uh, Wikipedia is free, open source and open access. Wikipedia is the number one most access source for research online. Um, and as an institution committed to education, knowledge and research, we can't overlook the fact that many people start their information searching at, with Wikipedia. By improving the accuracy, relevance and coverage of Wikipedia, we can raise the profile of the university and its accomplishments and that of the people, uh, the people and our regions. Um, writing Wikipedia articles also builds digital capabilities. This is a bit of a sneaky thing about Wikipedia. It builds research writing and citation skills. So anyone involved in education and teaching, it's a really good tool to build those skills. So a few facts about Wikipedia. Wikipedia was started in 2001. So that means it's been going for 20 years now. And today, Wikipedia exists in nearly 300 languages across 45 million articles. The projects and programs are made possible by the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and this reaches more than 1 billion devices a month. More than 200,000 editors contribute to Wikipedia every month. And Wikime Wikipedia is read more than 15 billion times every month. And that means people read, read Wikipedia about 6,000 times every second. Absolutely massive statistics there. So we held an edit-a-thon edit on the 8th of September, 2020. And Jennifer was on the project team with me for that, as well as um, a few other people in this webinar. Um, and that was held during the History Week New South Wales in collaboration with Wikimedia Australia. Our theme was history, what is it good for if it's not for everyone? Now, the university prides itself on the core value of equity. And when we look at Wikipedia articles, equity is missing, diversity is missing, people of color are missing, LGBTI people are missing, biographies of women are missing, content about the rich history of the university's regions are missing. So we saw all this and our goal was to engage participants to improve the reliability, authority and coverage of articles relating to the university and its surrounding regions which, with focus on underrepresented groups. And just, I was talking about those groups that are missed in history. So how we started planning for the event, what we did is we went to, we. We started by building a libguide, um, and this 
was a key tool for us. Uh, we gathered resources and attached it to the LibGuide. We, um, we all got trained with Wikimedia Australia and started building our connections with that group. Um, and we set up a project dashboard to keep up the statistics. So I'll just click on that and I'll show you what that looks like. We still have this page up. So if you go to libguides.newcastle.edu.au slash mist in history, you can see that same guide there. And it's a good resource because you can see the original schedule of the event. You can see each activity we did. Um, you can see tutorials, you can see the resources that we pointed out for people to use to edit articles. And um, here we have a link to the project dashboard. So what this did was collate all the statistics and people could sign up on the project dashboard um, to edit articles. Sorry about that, just trying to get to the next slide here. Okay, so what did we do on the day? We learned about Wikipedia and how to edit it directly from um, the Wikimedia Australia representatives. So we had um, Carrie and Anne with us and they were wonderful. Uh, we added indigenous Australians to the history section of our region's suburbs. Um, uh, and I'll show you an example of that later so you know what I'm talking about. And we practiced adding photos to Wikimedia Commons. Um, the Edit-a-thon was a, an all-day event. Um, it was online only from on Zoom from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we had scheduled breaks. Um, so what I'll show you now is the five pillars of Wikipedia, which is something that we learned about during the Edit-a-thon from the Wikimedia Australia representatives. Here's a nice illustration I found. Um, the five pillars of Wikipedia. So number one is that it's an online encyclopedia. Number two is that it's from a neutral point of view. Number three is that the content's free. Number four is that you should respect people on Wikipedia. And number five is that there are no firm rules. They like to say there are no rules, but they always say the four pillars. <laughs> They call them pillars instead of rules, but they kind of are flexible rules. And I'll go into detail more about each of those. So the first one, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. So what it is not, it's not a dictionary. It's not an advertisement. It's not a political tool. It's not a web directory. It's not a newspaper or an opinion column. And it's not a vanity press. It's not where you can write articles about yourself and, and your friends. The subjects must be notable. So I wanna talk a bit about this. Um, there's my log cat. I write to you an article, but they deleted it. Um, so a lot of articles people write do get deleted because not every article should be in Wikipedia. So I'm gonna click through to that and show you some examples. Um, the number one, article that gets deleted from Wikipedia is garage bands. So this is my public service announcement. If you're in a garage band, um, please don't write a Wikipedia article about it. Uh, so here's a whole list of bad article ideas. So don't write about yourself or your organization. Um, even if your organization merits an article, that's a conflict of interest. So they have band right there up front. Do not write about your band. Um, don't write a topic which ha hasn't been published. Um, don't write about a person, place, or idea that you and your friends made up. Um, don't write about anything which you can't at least write one sentence about. Don't write about the street you live on. Um, so the list goes on and on and on. There's a lot of examples of bad ideas for articles. And if you wanna see an even better list, look at the list of really, really, really stupid article ideas that you really, really, really should not create. Um, and if you have a look at that list, you'll see it's quite similar to the other list, but it's a bit funnier. 
So they, they say, um, don't create a Wikipedia article just because you wanna show off a picture of your cute cat. For instance, these cats are much cuter. Um, <laughs> and they, always, they have all sorts of funny little things, but again, it's the same. Your band, do not write a Wikipedia article about your band. Um, very similar to the, the other list, but really fun. Um, anything about hashtags, hashtag, I hate hashtags. Um, so long list there. So now you know what shouldn't be on Wikipedia. When you do write on Wikipedia, what should you write and how should you write it? Well, the second rule is Wikipedia is written from a neutral point of view. Um, and this means being very careful about the language you use, no judgment or flowery language no advocacy or debating, no personal experiences or opinions. Um, try to describe multiple point, points of view if it's something that needs that. Um, and do take care when writing about living people and the Wikimedians will actually discourage you from writing about living people because you can um, get in trouble with libel. Um, and be authoritative, do cite your sources. That's all part of being neutral. I'm just gonna give you a few examples of the sort of language you don't use. So there's a term called peacocking and that's using flowery language like I am the greatest. Um, so that's peacocking, that's the example of peacocking there. And also people call that puffery. Um, don't use cliches or euphemism, euphemisms. Don't use profanities and don't use weasel words. So um, when I talk about weasel words, this is, it is widely thought or some people say, or many believe that or scholars, scholars agree. So weasel words are really unsupported attributions that are vague and ambitious. Um, and here's my weasel saying, um, some people say that weasel words are great. And if you're interested in learning more about the language you should and shouldn't use, they have a great, Wikipedia article on that. And it's the, the Wikipedia has a whole manual of style that you can use for your writing. And I like the words to watch article it has um, more about puffery and peacocking, more about unsupported attributions, the weasel words, but it also has other things I haven't mentioned such as contentious labels. So you wouldn't want to write in an article about Prince Philip and use the words uh, misogynistic or um, racist, even though some of his comments maybe were clearly that, um, those labels are very contentious. You can't just um, put in someone's Wikipedia article that they're a racist, even if they are. Um, so that's a really interesting one to look at. Number three, Wikipedia is free. This means anything you put on Wikipedia is shared freely and under a Creative Commons license. Um, this also means you can't use copyrighted material on Wikipedia. Uh, you should not plagiarize on Wikipedia and you have to really watch close paraphrasing, which is when you take another person's works or you know, the, another person's words and sentences and you just make minor changes, that's still plagiarism. Um, so the same thing with um, uni assignments applies to Wikipedia articles as well. So that's why I think Wikipedia is very good for teaching and learning purposes. Number four, Wikipedians should be civil and respectful. This means um, don't panic if someone edits your work. Um, be polite, even when you disagree. Don't engage in edit wars. So what an edit war is, when someone suggests an edit to your article um, and they change it, and then you change it back straight away, and then they go and change it back again. Because anyone can freely go in and edit articles, this can happen a lot. And um, this is really discouraged in Wikipedia. Um, and a record of all the edits is kept. So don't worry about losing your edits. So if you do um, spend a lot of time creating an article and someone just deletes half of it, don't worry about it because the original version of the article is still there 
and it's still publicly available. Um, anybody can see what has previously happened with the article. Um, and just remember all people on Wikipedia are unpaid volunteers. Um, they're doing this because they have a passion for sharing information. So just assume that they're doing the right thing and hopefully they'll assume that you're trying to do the right thing. So just assume good faith. So the fifth pillar, Wikipedia has no firm rules. Um, what this really means is any existing rules in Wikipedia are open to interpretation and they may change over time. They're actually quite flexible and there's always exceptions to every rule. So what matters most is the principles and spirit of Wikipedia, you know, which is the other four pillars. So, you know, the being, being free, being open, being a, uh, being an encyclopedia, being neutral, all these things are what matters most. Um, do be bold, but don't be reckless. And don't panic when you're editing Wikipedia. You won't break Wikipedia, but please don't try to break Wikipedia. So now that I've gone over the five pillars, I'll just give you a few examples of some things that we did for the edit-a-thon and how the rules kind of apply to that. So this is a good one for rule number four, um, being civil. So I'm gonna talk about something that I did at the end of the thon. I contributed an article, um, Hope and Brown versus NIB Health Funds. And this article was later um, tagged as the article is poorly written. <laughs> so um, poor me, you know, I didn't take it to heart and um, some kind soul um, came back later and said, actually, this article isn't poorly written. You know, <laughs> the irony of the person who put that label on there saying that. Um, so someone, someone put that label on and then someone took that label off. So I think don't be worried about edits or if you see, you know, a, a funny little tag like that. And I'll, I'll just show you what happens. So if you click on, I'm clicking on this. So if you Googled the article, um, Hope and Brown versus NIB Health Funds, you'll find that. And you can click on this tab here, view history. And here you'll see all the history. And so this web page that was me. Those are the article. Those are the edits that I've made. And then Damien's came in and helped me fix up a few things. Um, and I actually know Damien. He's he's very kind. Um, and then someone's come and put the disclaimer on that says it's poorly written. Um, and Damien put in an edit fixing poorly written disclaimer. The irony, <laughs> and then someone's come and and taken off that poorly written and says, "Well, it looks okay to me." Um, so, if you want to see any of those versions, you just click on here. So you can see my original version here, and it tells you that it's an old version, and you can kind of click through and see all the changes that have happened over time. and it tells you what happened in each revision. So you can see it's just minor changes along the way. And see, this is where this um, cleanup thing appears, poorly written. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't offended. I was like, yeah, sure, maybe. Um, but I just, I didn't do anything about it. I just waited and eventually someone took that off and they still only made minor changes to the article. Um, so that shows you a bit how, how that works. So I say, don't be offended if you do do a Wikipedia article and people start to bash it. It does happen, but the people are pretty, pretty good about it. And in the edit-a-thon, we actually did 869 total edits, so quite a few. And um, here was the activity we did as a group during the edit -a thon which was adding Indigenous Australians to the history. Um, uh, they have different kind of subheadings. So 
the history subheadings of each suburb. So we had a whole list of suburbs, like this is just a, a few examples that I've put of ones around Newcastle, but we also did them, you know, around Aroomba, around Port Macquarie, you know, um, around the Hunter Valley. So we did this to uh, pages all around. And what we did was added one line um, and for the Newcastle suburbs, we added the Aboriginal people in this area, the Awabakal were the first people of this land. Just a simple statement and you see it has a two there, that means there's a reference. And so that statement was referenced directly to um, a council homepage or something like that. So um, people knew that that piece of information was backed up by, by truth. And I, I think that's very important to consider anytime you add anything to a Wikipedia article, add a correction, you have to say where you got the information from. Um, so this one, we added it there, 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 but we, did, we added it to quite a few pages. And this was a really popular activity and it was the most popular activity of the day. And I think it was because one, it was something really simple and easy to do. But two, it made people feel like they were making a real difference to acknowledge the history missing on Wikipedia. And it was very popular in, I've just recently went back to see if they were take, if these changes were taken off or any changes were made and they weren't, they're all still there. So we did this um, in September last year no one's taken these down or done an edit or with us. So the Wikipedia community seems to accept that this belongs there, which makes me really happy. Um, so something else we discovered as part of the edit-a-thon, um, I had a funny kind of thing. Why aren't there more photos on Wikipedia? Why don't some articles have photos? And so th this was something that I've, I've been personally exploring and I actually presented on this during the edit-a-thon. Um, and here, for example, is a good um, example of a Wikipedia article um, about Nell and artists. And it's easy to find photos of Nell and of her works um, in online, but you can't use any of them because of copyright. So most of the articles we identified in the edit-a-thon don't have photos and it, it was easy to find photos, but it was hard to find photos that don't violate Australian copyright laws. So to do that, you have to find photos that are licensed under Creative Commons or um, in the public domain. So if you find a photo, how do you get it into Wikipedia? Well. First, you have to upload it to Wikimedia Commons. So this is something kind of new to me that, that I've learned about in the past year. So it's a different site than Wikipedia, commons.wikimedia.org. And Wikimedia Commons is a media file repository that makes available public domain and freely licensed um, educational content to everyone. And it is a different site, but it's the same login. So if you already have a Wikipedia login or you create a Wikipedia login, it's the same login as Wikimedia Commons. So this is a really great tool that Wikimedia has to help you navigate around those copyright issues. Um, what, is, what do they allow on Wikimedia Commons? So first of all, you may upload works that you created entirely yourself. So this includes if you've taken photos and videos of natural landscapes, animals and plants. Um, so this is a really popular in Wikipedia to have um, all these pictures of, of different animals and plants, public figures and people photographed in public places, um, useful or non-artistic objects. So, um, if you go to a museum and take a picture of a painting or a sculpture, that can be under copyright. So that's why we say non-artistic objects. Um, you can upload your own graphs, maps, diagrams, and audio. Um, there was a, a Wikipedia project somewhere else in the world, I think somewhere in Europe, where they were creating graphs and adding them to Wikipedia. Um, 
And one of my favorite for around Newcastle is taking pictures of places or buildings and adding them to Wikipedia. Um, and that's easy. So if you are, you know, wandering through your neighborhood and you see a historic building, why not take a picture of it and add it to Wikipedia, to Wikimedia Commons? And then someone else can find that and add it to a Wikipedia, Wikipedia article. So what you can't put on there, what's not allowed is anything copyrighted. So you can't scan in or upload a logo or CD or DVD covers or promotional photos. Um, you can't use screenshots of TV shows, movies, DVDs, and software, um, drawings of characters from comics, TV, or movies, um, even if you drew them yourself. So I know someone who's an artist and he draws um, from famous, he, he drew a famous person from a famous photograph and he couldn't put it on Wikipedia because that photograph was under copyright. And even though he didn't use a photograph, it was a drawing of the photograph, it was still very clear where he got the content from. So you just have to be careful with that. Um, most pictures published online, actually published online are under copyright. So you do have to be careful. So you can share your own work. When you share your own work on Wiki, Wikimedia Commons with a free license, you grant anyone permission to use, copy, modify, and sell it as long as they follow the rules of the license. And you cannot upload others' work except with these exceptions. So if it's a Creative Commons work, so you can find some Creative Commons works on Flickr. Um, also creativecommons.org has a huge library. So anything you can find on those, you can add to um, Wikimedia Commons. You can add public domain works. So the, in Australia, this is um, images that are pre-1955 are um, in the public domain. Um, photographs of public domain works such as old statues and old works of art. So this is, um, as a general rule, the death of the creator plus 70 years. So that's a bit harder to figure out. So I, I like to stick with the pre-1955 rule. That's the easiest if I'm going, in pub, going for public domain works. Um, and where I work here in Special Collections, we have a large database of public domain works. So I comb through those to see if any of them will match up to the Wikipedia articles. So these are the Creative Commons licenses that are allowed on Wikimedia Commons. So if you do upload your content, you have to make a choice of which one you would like to use. So CC BY, this allows users to distribute, adapt, um, build upon, um, or reuse as long as they give att attribution. And I had a, a CC BY slide, which was my five pillars of Wikipedia illustration slide, and I had an attribution on that, um, and that I had found on Flickr, and it was CC BY. Um, and then similar to that license is CC BY share alike, and that just means if people do make an adaptation to that and uh, reuse it, they have to license it under the similar license, so they have to license it under Creative Commons as well. Um, there's also CC0, which is a public dedication tool, which in, in which creators give up copyright entirely and put their works in the public domain. And those little illustrations of the peacock and the weasel, those were CC0, those were in the public domain. Um, and I found those on Wikimedia Commons and I did not have to attribute or say who was the creator because they're just whoever created them, put them out there for everyone to use. So this is an example of a work that's in, that's a historic work that's pre-1955, that's in the public domain. So this is on the Living Histories at UON website. And this is um, in Antarctica claiming land for the British in 1931. So the, the original website, I have a link to that. And I have a link to what it looks like on the Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons. So I just want to show you those examples. Oh, hold on there. Okay, 
So this is what it looks like when you upload something onto Wikimedia Commons. You get that. And then from there, I was able to use that and put it um, directly onto a Wikipedia page. So that was really great. Sorry, just getting back to this. So what did we learn um, as part of the edit-a-thon? The project was the most successful in increasing library staff digital capabilities and also in the digital capabilities of participants. Um, the project team pushed technologies to the limit to deliver a COVID safe online event. So that was really interesting having an entire all day event online. Um, feedback um, from the training events that we did and the post event comments indicated that people found the Wikimedia Australia training really easy and confidence boosting. And I would recommend that training to anyone. Um, all, everyone that participated were no, more knowledgeable and skilled in Wikipedia. And that was, we know that because we polled them about that. Um, the edit-a-thon was successful in engaging community participants and improving Wikipedia. And one participants, participant said, I didn't expect to find it as fun as I did. It's strangely addictive to comb through what's there and figure out where additions can be made. I feel like I might start editing Wikipedia pages for fun now. And I know I do that we did have a few participants from the edit-a-thon that have continued on as Wikipedia editors and they, they do it for fun as a hobby. Um, the editing done by participants on the day raised the profile of the university library um, by promoting um, referencing of our library sources and the edits completed during the edit-a-thon made Wikipedia just slightly more equitable just by a little bit. Um, one activity that everybody did say they enjoy as I said was the um, adding the statements to townships that seemed to make a, a big difference. Um, you know, in conclusion, it was a great event. Uh, we uploaded 38 photos and had 112 articles that we edited. Um, and the relationship with Wikimedia Australia uh, was great. And their volunteers are really dedicated. And I hope we can do another event again in the future like this. So, I think that's about it for me. I might stop sharing my screen here and um, see if any of you all that are hanging around have any questions. There's only one question from Ben so far, which is, <laughs> are there any plans for future events? Ah, yes, yes. Well, um, I do know that One Lib, One Ref is coming up um, and that's from mid-May. Uh, to I think the end of May um, and I was talking to Caddy Brain about what we might do for that and it, it might be fun to do something around that where we just all hop on to Wikipedia together for an hour and and do put in one one citation so the one live one ref thing is is people go in they find an article that or, or a reference that needs a citation they go and look up the citation and they add the reference um, so it's an easy, easy thing to do, and it helps build Wikipedia. There's another question from Marie Hadley. Does the library run Wikipedia editing training sessions? Um, we don't at the moment, but I think uh, we would like to get Wikimedia Australia back in to do more training. Um, and I could see us um, definitely doing more training sessions, and especially in term two. So do watch this space. Um, maybe um, if you're interested, you could send an email um, to one of us, um, to me or Jennifer. Um, so I'm page.right at newcastle.edu.au. Um, and we can, we can put you on a list or something to say that you're interested. Um, when we do organize the next the next bout of training. 
then yes, this video will be made available online. That was the other question. <laughs> Great. Great. That's good. Okay. So are there any other questions? No other questions have come through. Okay. Marie says thanks and yes, she will contact you. Great, thanks. Okay. And um, Jennifer, Jennifer, you were at the edit-a-thon. Is there anything you wanted to add about it that I didn't cover? No, you've pretty much covered everything. Um, it certainly boosted my digital capability skills in managing Zoom breakout rooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was a bit of a learning curve for us. I think we had never used the Zoom breakout rooms like that. Um, and on the day, we had actually two, two separate Zoom rooms entirely. And then we had breakout rooms in one and breakout rooms going in the other. So it was quite complicated, <laughs> quite a complicated setup. No other questions. Okay. Yeah, sorry if I, I rushed through it a bit. I thought that, um, oh, thanks, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I would um, fill up the whole hour with the amount of content I had, but I got through it pretty quickly. <laughs> And you were um, a participant in the Wikipedia as well. Do you have anything to say about your experience? Um, no, I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was um, something different. And um, I could definitely see how, um, particularly in the context of uh, the university, we could um, upskill people and uh, improve Wikipedia as a resource. No, there are no more questions, so okay, we might finish then. Yeah, let's leave it there. Thanks, guys. Sounds great. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye.